And Father, we thank you so much for just the opportunity to be able to be here this morning. Just pray you speak to our hearts today. We thank you for each one here. We pray for those that are listening. God, we just ask you that you just uh, speak to us and that we may, may be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we've been on a journey together of how to reconnect. Uh, I feel like this is, uh, we've talked the last few weeks about that, about reconnecting. And so I want to give a story about really when I think of re- reconnecting or uh, getting getting back uh, with really just getting connected with God and with each other. So I had a computer. Many of you have had those before. Uh, we uh, And one day I was using it and it just stopped, like it stopped connecting to the internet. And so just like you, I was confused, you know, when something like that happens, it's confusing. So I'm trying to think through all the little steps that I know to do. And so I began to kind of walk through this process that kind of I've done over the years through time. And so it was basically shut the computer off, start it back up, see if it connects. Usually sometimes, you know, the password changed or, you know, just some some weird thing that's happened. And so then I noticed, you know, I, one thing I really checked and made sure was that the little uh, uh, signal thing was still there. Like it was, there was full signal, but it wasn't connecting. And I didn't understand why my computer wasn't connecting to this full signal. So I began to uh, process this, I shut it off, and just over time, like just frustration came, and it was just really irritating of why this thing would it go. So I got another computer, and I turned it on and connected it, it worked fine. I, you know, I, I, then I started messing with that. I began to, you know, look up little articles or things to make sure that I could, how to get it connected. And it wasn't really at the time where you, YouTube was was common enough where you just, how to, st- uh, uh, how to stuff. At least I wasn't doing it at the time, and you know Google was still pretty new as well. But anyway, I was I was trying to process how to hook and how to connect uh, my computer, and it became frustrating. So then I went to the modem, which you know I'm not a wizard when it comes to technology, but I'm 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 up. I know enough, right? Usually enough to get myself in trouble. But and I also know the backspace where I can go back, or I learned how to put it back to where it was at least. So. There came a point where I began to, you know, I, I tried the modem, I turned it off, thought maybe that would work, not, and then over time my frustration level was going, it began to, you know, just really feel irritated. My wife was unhappy because I was unhappy, and then I began to think through what is going to cost for a new computer. It was a newer computer, it should be working, why isn't it working? Then I'm going to have to talk to somebody about getting a new computer, and all this, you know, drama started creating over not being connected. And so I... I finally come to a solution. Again, I can't remember how I came to the solution, but I do remember coming to the solution. And what had happened is this particular model of computer had a switch on the, the front of the computer. And I must have, have bumped the switch, like I clicked the switch, and, and it uh, shut off the, the connection to the internet. Now, I don't know why or who designed it. Usually those, that switch is a, a software inside it, so I don't know where or why it had a switch on the outside, but it had a switch, and that switch clicked off, and when it clicked off, even though the signal was strong, this that particular computer would not connect to it. And you know, I think of, when I think of reconnect, I think, again, the, what we've talked about in a few weeks ago, we talked about what causes us to disconnect. Now just think of that switch, that switch. You know, something happens and we switch off. Now maybe we don't even know we switched off. We, we still go through the motions, we still try to, to get connected, but we're really not connected because a few things may have happened. And that could have been a, a hurt. Someone hurt you, and you just like, you know what? You emotionally just clicked off. You just thought, you know what? I'm not going to I'm not gonna mo- walk down this road anymore. Someone had some plans have changed or something changed where, where uh, they said one thing and then other things kind of took place. And so you just kind of like mostly shut off there. And, and so that's, that's one reason why we disconnect from God and from others. It really hurts. Uh, another reason why is because, we, you know, we're tired. You know, it's just, a, it's a weary season. And depending on where your kids are in age and where your life is, you know, in particular, all the drama. And I really think because we're so connected to the Internet and connected to social medias uh, and all that, that it draws us into uh, just entertainment society that we just are always drawn and, and it just wears us out. I think it's wearing us out more than we want to admit. But what happens is we switch the switch and we become disconnected because we're so connected to everything, we can be connected to nothing, right? And so that's, that's, another, that, that's another reason why we, we tend to disconnect. Uh, I think another reason why is maybe we switch is maybe we started to move down this process of reconnection and a hurt or afraid 
people will know who you are. People will know the real you, the other side of you, the, the shadow you, if you will. Like they're, 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 they begin to see who you are. And there's a fear that comes, you know, to be really known and loved is really our desire to be loved for who you are and not for what you do or don't do. Like that's real. And as we walk through that, like that, 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 that because we're afraid, because when you begin to get known, then people begin to know you. you know, there's just a fear in that. And so I think that's one reason why we, the switch gets pushed and we disconnect. Uh, again, we talked about being overwhelmed. And, and, I, and I think, again, it just goes with tiredness and even afraid, kind of a combination of all that. It's just an overwhelming feeling that, you know, I just, I'm so, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to disconnect from everything. And you know what that really suffers? It's really, we suffer from that. The signal was strong. The signal was going, but my computer was the one suffering. Eventually, I was suffering because my computer wasn't working. But because of that disconnect, there was, there was, there was some struggle there. And, and when, it, when it comes to being overwhelmed, once the, the reason why we disconnect, and we disconnect from God first. That's really the, the truth. We disconnect from God, and then we disconnect from God. There's maybe some healthy seasons to disconnect from somebody else, from other people for a season. There's times to recover, refresh, Sabbath. You know, there's times to rest. But, there's, but when it's a continual long time where I'm just going to stay disconnected from everybody, that really causes problems. And then finally, I think we, we just choose. Sometimes, you know, again, I accidentally bumped that switch on that computer, but maybe today you feel like I just want to switch it off and I'm not, I'm not turning it back on. I don't care. I don't care, you know. And, and again, where does this play out? This plays out truly in our lives. When we're disconnected too long in our marriage, it begins to grow cold and stale, and it begins to lose lose uh, the intention that God had for it, and it begins to uh, lose the romance and the love and affection that that a healthy marriage should fulfill. When we disconnect from our kids, they grow up, right? And eventually, they get to make choices and they get to make the decisions. And so, so again, disconnecting has consequences, and a lot of those consequences are unintended. We don't expect what happens. We're just trying to take a break. We're just trying to. Uh, you know, even we self care. You know, we think I'm going to self care, and but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's not the solution that we think it is when we begin to disconnect. And so, what we want to do is again, Jordan did a great job last week of talking about how to how are we to start the process of reconnection, and and a few things, and I think it really does matter. And so we're gonna we're gonna start where he stopped last week, and and he said four things. He said to be honest, you know, and I really think if we're going to reconnect, we, we got to be honest. We have to come to a place where we're honest and open and really just where we are and why we're where we are, right? We have to believe God is good because what keeps us disconnected is because we begin to sometimes believe our own, our own thinking and not what God says. Like we begin to assume our own solutions and not really think through what God wants us to do or we, we don't think it through. And then there comes a place where we have to take a step of faith. So if we're going to reconnect you have to take a step of faith. I had to take the faith to listen to whoever told me to turn on the switch, right? There, again, it wasn't, wasn't much faith, but it was faith. I had to follow through. And at that point, there was a desperation. So if you're honest, you believe God is good, you take that step of faith. Because the truth is, when you move into reconnecting, when you walk down the journey that we're talking, you will be hurt. It will be tiring. It's going to be overwhelming. There is some fear. Uh, it's, it, you can be afraid of being known. There, there is some struggle. And sometimes you don't feel like any of those things. But if we're going to really fulfill what God's called us to do, we're going to be on mission for God and, and enjoy the ministry God has for us, we have to begin to take this step, this direction. We've got to move this way, right? And so uh, finally, you know, and I think this is where the test comes, is you got to let God prove that he's better. When we connect to God, when we connect with each other, we got, we got to let God prove. He's going to show us who he is and what we're to do. We're, we have to trust God in that, okay? So again, this isn't moving from where we are. Uh, this, this, so the, the key is this, is we want to connect where we are. Uh, we, gotta react, we gotta figure out where we are so that we can connect. We know the signal has not changed. God wants to reconnect with you. And so uh, as we continue this journey, really this phrase, uh, the journey of reconnection continues. So we saw last week where it begins with being honest, taking that step of faith, believing God is good, you know, just trusting what God is doing. And so as we moved forward, uh, we're, con- we're this journey. And I really want to focus on, like, it is a journey. It's not going to happen happen just one moment. Maybe just reconnection for you is beginning by listening to this uh, 
this video. Maybe this maybe reconnection to you is by coming to church on Sunday. Maybe reconnection to you is joining one of our life groups. Like there's a beginning somewhere, right? There's a moment in your story. There's a moment where well, I was disconnected and I became connected, right? There's a story in my story about the computer, right? That how I got disconnected and then how I reconnected my computer. So again, it's a story. It's a, it's a journey, and so and and these these this journey. You know, is is not. It takes some time. It takes a process. It takes willingness to to step into this. Okay, but hopefully today we'll get something from the Word of God to help us in this journey. Uh, so the con- re- the journey of reconnection continues as we are loved and express love to others. And so we're in the First John, First uh, John chapter four. This is uh, the Apostle John that uh, Jesus that he referred to himself in in his gospel as the one that Jesus loved. So he understood the love of God. He, he was one of the youngest uh, disciples that Jesus had, had, uh, had gathered around him. And he would also live the oldest. And he would be the only one that wouldn't die of, a, of, of martyrdom. And so he lived a long life. And he had great influence in his life. And as he pens his, his letter in, in first, second, third John, those letters that are known from him, they really capture this idea that really what he focused on was this love of God. He even, he'd even come to, in chapter 3, like, you know, just this, what kind of love is this? this the manner of love that God has for us. And so uh, he just, he really expressed love. He felt love, and he understood who love was. And so uh, really, it also repeats itself. It's, it's really this idea of emphasis. John is, is not just repeating himself to repeat himself. It wasn't his age issue. It's really he wants to influence. He wants you to understand that uh, the love that God has. So you'll hear some, some repetition in this passage, but this passage really brings out that God loves you and, and who God is, okay? And so uh, if we're to continue the journey of reconnection, we have to remember that we are loved, and then we are to express that love to others. And so uh, verse 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for, God, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not love does not know God, because God is love. And so he's really calling them out. Like, if, if we loved, right, beloved, let us love one another. We're to, he's, he's telling us what we're to do. We're to love each other. Why? Because God is love. He, he clearly says that. Verse 9, in, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us. So we know what love is. Uh, you know, I want to know what love is, right? Uh, that song, and I want you to show me, right? Like, there, there's a point. What is, he knows what love is. And he says, in this is love of God was made manifest to us. And so what is that? God sent his only son. So if you want to know what love is, is a creator of heaven, the, the God himself, the creator of all things, loves you so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for you. And says so he, uh, he says, sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And so this love was not just an idea, it's, it's action. It's an actionable love. In this love, not that we have loved God, but he loved us and his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He, he stepped in. He, he provided a, a sacrifice for us. He took that we were guilty. He took the payment on himself. And he says that. He says, propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought, we also ought to love one another. And so he really is emphasizing. Already he said three times we're to love one another. And if we don't love each other, we don't know God. And so he's really putting clarity like, this love that you have, this love that you've experienced, this love that's connected you, this love that you, that, that this signal that God loves you is very strong. And you know, and I think in some points, we just have to remind ourselves of that love. He says, no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and he is in us. And we are connected to God, right? If, if we love one another, if we show our love for one another, we're connected to God because God is love. And so this, this love really of God is seen as we love uh, each others. And it's also felt and re- realized. Verse 16, so we have come to know and believe the love, the love that God has for us. And so God is love. Again, very familiar. He really, it's, it's, he's repeating this for emphasis, that he's getting to us understand that we are to enjoy God's love. We are to, ex- this experiential love of God, this reminder that you can stay connected, and He loves you. And so a few things we, we get, just that He's repeated. First is God loves is love. So God is love. It's kind of the big picture here. And because of this love, uh, we are to, we, we're to love others, right? And so, again, God is love. And I think then the other side is this, is, is we, not only God is love, but we are to, that God loves you, right? So, so God is love, 
but God loves you. And in a way that I can illustrate this or see this in my mind, it's kind of like the swimming pool, right? The swimming pool when I was a kid, swimming pool is the swimming pool. Like, swimming pool is like heaven for me. Like, it was like the amazing place. Anybody had a swimming pool, they were like super rich, right? And so, uh, uh, so it was just like, oh, the swimming pool. I can smell the chlorine. Like, it was just like swimming. I loved it. And so, uh, so I think of when you, when you, we got to go to the swimming pool, we, it's kind of the picture here is, is we got to experience when we were in the pool, we just experienced the greatness of the pool, right? We, as we come home that day, we talk about how awesome the pool was and just what a great day. Your eyes will be burning because of all the chlorine, right? And it's just like, oh, it's just so good. And I think that's really like God, like, man, he's so good. And if you begin to realize that God is love and that he loves you, and I think we have to just remind us he loves you. You don't have to be more than you. You don't have to be, you don't have to work harder to be loved. You don't have to, you don't have to earn this love. You don't, you don't, there's nothing, he loves you, period. He doesn't love you at your best. He loves you where you're at. He's not waiting for you to be lovable for him to love you. Like he loves you. God loves you. And how do we know that? He took the, the cross. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. He, he went to great lengths, and he's also sent messengers and people in your life to show you that his love, and God has loved you and loves you. And I just think in this season where we're disconnected, just need to remind ourselves, God loves me. God loves me, that Jesus loves me, that he loves me. And so one thing I always say to my, my kids when they were little, I would always say, who loves you the most? And they tell me, Dad loves me. Dad loves me, right? I'd make them say, Dad loves you. I was like, who, who loves you most? Daddy loves me. And I know mom was up there, but dad's number one, right? Because I'm talking to him, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the one working with him right here in this moment. So I said, God, our dad loves you. And so and I'd be like, who loves you more than dad? And they would say to me, Jesus. And I was like, how do you know that? Because he died on the cross for me. Because I want them to remember that God loves them. And God loved them so much that he gave so much for them, right? And so, uh, so again, we're reminded. Then, then not only as we are in the pool, the, the best thing that you can do is get people in the pool with you. When your friend got to go with you to the pool, when your mom said, yeah, why don't you invite a friend to the pool? Like That was like heaven when the cousins got to come and we went to the pool, double, double, right? Like, because now we could go enjoy the pool together and, and just it was just such a great experience. And I really see that in this idea. He's saying God is love and whoever abides in the love abides in God and God abides in him. You're connected. And that's where our heart is, is to be connected with God. By this, the love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because he is also, uh, so also are we in the world. Verse 9, there's no fear. So he, now he begins to, what keeps us from that, from being loved is afraid, being afraid, being afraid of being known, being afraid to love. God doesn't, waiting for anything, he loves you. And so uh, he goes on, he says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts us out from fear. That's what's caused us to disconnect. It's because we've been hurt, we're tired, we're overwhelmed, we're, you know, some, some just, we just don't want to be connected. Because of that, we're afraid. We're afraid what? To be hurt, to be tired, to be overwhelmed. And guess what? As you begin to love God and you get on mission with God, you're going. What, what being connected means is being more vulnerable again, being, letting people speak into your life, letting people love you, let people be honest to you, letting, uh, just letting people in your life. And so that's not easy. And what I'm telling you is you get connected, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Like, and you're going to, you're, the, the part of you is going to want to switch it off and be like, nope, that's why I didn't want to get connected in the first place. Because it is, it is emotional. It is personal. It, it does hurt. It is real. And so he, he goes on. He says, uh, so there is no fear. So again, what makes me not be afraid is that I know I'm loved by God. So what keeps me not from loving other people? Because listen, lo- loving other people is very difficult. It's not, it's not something that's easier or natural. The way I love people is because God loves me and reminds me that he loves me. He says, but, he says, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears does not begin, uh, does not, has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. So the fact that I can have confidence and I can get connected with God first, enjoy the vastness of his love, enjoy his love and just know that he loves me, but then also to be on mission with him and say, you know what, because he loves me, because I'm loved, I want others to know this love. I'm going to love my brother. I'm going to love my enemy. I'm going to love those that are unlovable. I'm going to step into this fa- into this space where it's not easy or comfortable. Be- why? Because he first loved me. And because of he first loved me, I have confidence to know that when I'm in the moment when I need love, love is coming, right? And so he says, if anyone says, I love you, I love God and hates his brother, 
He's a liar, for he does not love his brother whom he has seen. Cannot, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And so it's expressed, love is seen. If, you want to, if we want to be seen as a loving church or loving people, it's by we're connected to God and, uh, and connected to others. And so it's seen by our love for each other. Uh, verse 21, and this commandment. So it finally kind of sums down that we're to love. It's, it's even in the commandment. It says, and this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God, must also love his brother. And so again, the journey of reconnection continues continues as we are loved and express love to others. So we enjoy God's love, and then we show that love to other people. Now again, that sounds great on paper, right? And I'm telling you, the process is not going to be comfortable all the time. But it does take, it, and it takes some faith. It takes like the steps we talked about. It takes moving toward this reconnection. And so Today, or I want to kind of close this up by, is by really in, in uh, Romans chapter 12, and we'll, we'll cover some more of this later on this week or this, this series, but the idea is, as how we're to do this, we, you know, there is an avenue. And at Living Hope Church, I mean, again, there's not, like, the truth is, is you can't love each other by just coming to church on Sunday. Now, that's, there's some times, there's a, that really is a time for you to worship God and to love God. And again, we would love for you to come, get to know you, be known like this is this is a great way, space, a place, you know, to to get to know each other. Now again, but there's more than that. Uh, we, we really believe that we want you to know Jesus, to have a relationship with Christ, but we also want you to be known in relationship with others. And so, one avenue or one vehicle that we have 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 at Living Hope Church, and it's not new; other churches have this as well, is really our life groups. That our life groups really bring it back down to to those relationships. And what we really are saying is doing life together. The more you bring people in your life and you're on mission together, like that's where the joy comes in. That's where hope comes in. That's where, that's where you feel the love of God Like is by having people around you. And I can tell you in my life in the last seven years with the intentionality of bringing people in my life, many of them are nothing like me. Many of them, the only thing we have in, in common is really the love for the gospel, the love for each other, the love for gospel, and, and love to be obedient to God's command to love one another. And so that's really what we bring to the table. And as we begin to do that, we begin to see God's hand in these relationships and we get challenged. We get, we get uh, uh, just moved to go beyond where we are comfortable and really connected. And so uh, one, one thing that in my life, I have my own narrative. Like there's something about me all my life, I've, well, not all my life, but most, when I was a child, I just came to this idea that the people are, everybody's against me. I don't know if they were. I struggled in school. They struggled in different places. Nobody really, I didn't feel connected, okay? I didn't feel like people were on my side. Well, in the last seven, you know, last seven years, actually, yeah, seven years, it's really become known that I'm actually, I have, so what would happen to me is I would feel hurt, and then I would, like, create this narrative, like, okay, I'm going to show you, and the Rocky music would kick on, dun, 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 and then I would like do what I said I, what someone said I couldn't do. Well, in the last seven years, I have found that I have put, so, I'm so connected, I have good people around me that I come up with an idea, and instead of, I have to like create this, this, this opposite reality that people are against me, because people are actually for me. I'll share something, and they're like, man, that's a great, like, they're like, you can do it. Let's, let's go for it. And so, so there's, so there's this, this, it's really been difficult for me to readjust this idea. It's like, I can't, you know, I can't have a pity party. I can't use that as my strength because really people not only expect me to do well, they're going to help me be, do well and encourage me. Why? Because I'm connected with others, right? And they help grow me to be that. And so in Romans chapter 12, uh, uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, is writing to the Roman church, and he's really just giving them a couple things of what Christian community looks like. And we're going to walk through this because I want to know that we, we, we want to see a big picture, love God, love each other, but how do we do that? And he, he starts it out. He says, let love be genuine. And so this is working with real people in real time that love is to be genuine. We're to abhor what's evil. We're to stand for what's right. We're to hold fast to what is good. We're to love one another with a brotherly affection. We're to be affectionate. And, and, and encouraging, right? I love this one. Outdo one another in showing honor. We're to honor each other. So what does this look like in the ground? Well, this is life groups, Living Hope Church. We want you to get connected to a life group where you can love each other, we can honor each other, where you can walk through. Like, and again, it takes a time commitment. It takes a willingness to step out in faith. And so it's, it's not easy. And so, uh, but, but I think it's biblical. And you can't, you can't fulfill all the one another's in the scripture without being together. 
Like you can't. Like you got to get connected somewhere. And so if you're going to grow in your faith. And says, verse 11, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. And so you're to, we're to connect. We're to, we're, to, we're to hear. We're to spend time with each other. Uh, I, we don't really use the phrase be slothful in zeal. But the idea is, uh, is not to be lethargic. We're not to, we're not to have no energy or low energy. We're actually to be excited about God's own. Again, when I was a kid going to the pool, like, man, it was like Christmas every time we got to go. And then when the water slides came about, man, it was amazing. Like, it was like so exciting. And I remember one time when my cousins got to go with me to the water slide. Like, that was like so good. And so my, my zeal and my excitement, and listen, what God has done for us and who God is and the fact maybe some of you are been disconnected, but so those that are connected, those that know God and know and loved, are loved by God, like just are, have that refreshment of knowing what it means to be connected, we have an obligation to celebrate and bring energy to these relationships. He says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, constant prayer. And as we walk in to these relationships, these things are needed. We're going to be, I mean, you just spend time with people. You're going to need prayer. Prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, uh, uh, to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. And then finally, bless those that persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another and do not be proud. And so these are, this is really just the Bible telling. He's like, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. And so, so again, what keeps us is sometimes we think we're better than people. And sometimes we think we're worse than people. And so these are all obstacles that keep us from having relationships with each other. Again, I love how, G, how uh, John gets to there and he says, listen, this is command. We're to remind this is we're, this is not an option. And so it's really for God's people, for God's, uh, for the church, we are to be connected. We're, we're to be connected with God and we're to be connected with each other. And there's consequences when we're not. And so, so again, as we, as we walk through this, we're, we're the challenge for you today is, is maybe, again, uh, our life group season has kicked off. We're, we're, we're in the new fall season and we really feel like this is more than just coming to a class being lectured. This is where people, real people, that are striving to walk with God, that are wanting to know what God's doing in their life, they're coming together and they're they're learning with again. And you can be at all different levels. Like no one's uh, there's we we have a few different times, you know. And and again, if there's not a time that works, uh, that you know, just let us know. Like let us know what we can do because we want to walk with you. Again, if if it doesn't work out where you come to a life group, we just want to get connected in that process. Another way to do that is we have an information meeting on October 16th. That information is going to get you to get you some other avenues and some opportunities where you can get connected, not just beyond just doing life together. Be doing life together is that, but there's also serving opportunities and some and some uh, some places where we can get connected back not only to uh, to God, but also connected to each other and as we serve one another as we obey the scriptures. So so again, uh, all this said, listen, I just wanted to remind you today, wherever you are, wherever you feel, Maybe today you're just like, you know what, I've been disconnected, and if I start walking down this, down this road, Pastor, it's going to happen again. You know, I'm, I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to be overwhelmed. You know what, I, 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 I do sympathize with you in that, but I do think that the consequences of not being connected, that the consequences of not taking that step of faith, not the consequences of not being honest of why you've been hurt will have greater damage than, than when you step into those places because God knows you, God cares about you, and there's some of the greatest relationships I've ever had have been in life together. When I begin to be vulnerable, being open, not be conceited, not to think I know everything, but to really humble myself in relationship with others, that's where God blesses me, grows me, challenges me, and helps me be more like Him. And so I just want to encourage you. Uh, we, we, we are with you. So if there's a way, if you want to respond, uh, uh, if you want to uh, direct message us on, on, uh, on the platform or just however you want to connect with us, We'd love to hear from you. You can also fill out a, a, a card there so we can call you, get connected with you. We want to walk with you where you're at. We, one thing that we, at Living Up Church, we want to walk with you where you're at. And we, want you to, we want to share the hope we have in Christ. We want you to know Jesus in that intimate relationship. We want you to be known, and we want you to own your faith. And so whatever your next step is, we want to be a part of it. So let's pray. God, we thank you for each one here. We thank you for the challenge before us through Scripture. Thank you for... Lord, just reminding us uh, how 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 we need to how loved we are, really, and because we're loved, 
because we're loved. Well, God, I can love others, and I can step into difficult, hard, sometimes not easy spaces and to show the love for others. We just pray, God, give us wisdom. Help us to be more like you. We thank you for all your grace and goodness, and we just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.